We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Now, so on the Porsche 928 wide body project, we are working on modernizing the front end and getting the design that we want. Now that has its own challenges because we cannot find a turn signal that we can just drag and drop from another vehicle that fits in the shape. So instead, in this video, we go over the process of how we go from clay to 3D scanning to 3D printing. You would be surprised to find out that the tooling required for this is not as expensive as you may think. This is a rough yeah. sketch, but a good rough sketch. But Thank you. I, but Thank you. looking at this makes me think that we want to go a little taller with our light than what that is currently carved yeah. to be. When I when I carved that in there, it was just a placeholder. Yeah. That was never meant to be the final anything. It was just to get an idea of roughly yep. what was going to go there. Yep. <laughs> and yeah. immediately fell off. <laughs> I just need you for spacing, that's it, all right? Chill. So this is an oil-based clay that is made for automotive, well, just modeling in general. Since it's oil-based, it never dries. So I can always go back and rework it. The goal for right now is to get our lens roughed in the profile of it because I'm actually going to be digitally recreating it. So if there's any deviations or it's not perfectly 100% laser level, it's not the end of the world, but I'm gonna try to get it close in a reasonable amount of time. If you're just tuning in and you haven't seen our process yet, I'm using this clay so that we can figure out what's going on. Because if you just draw something on some paper and then go straight from that to say CAD work and then you print out a test piece and you go to fit it in, it might end up being a waste of time because you're not able to see perfectly to scale what's going on. And this way, I can actually work to completely to scale, get it roughed in clay, and then I can 3D scan it and then do the CAD work using the scan as a guide. So it ends up saving time in the long run, even if it doesn't seem like that up front. I like I like the height. Yeah, I do too. Ignore any defects, obviously, and I think right. like waves and all that stuff. Just... I'm used to ignoring defects. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. That's the light. I agree with you. It was just too, too much on the bottom. Yep. And that's the light. I think what I need to do now is just level out the top a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. And then it's 3D scanning time. Nice. The mailman just dropped off new lighting. These are actual studio lights rather than the uh, work lights we've been using lately. So that, I can't even say lately, since the beginning of our channel. <laughs> uh, basically, any, any money we've made in this YouTube channel, we've been directly putting back into it to increase quality for you guys. I think it's difficult on myself per usual. We have more lights coming as well. We're gonna do overhead lights, which I'm really excited about. There we have it. I have not even set these up right, but we have lights now. And I'm not being blinded, which is awesome. Yeah. Thank you everybody who has subscribed, liked, shared, commented, and just loved us in general because we're upgrading because of you. Woo! <laughs> got cop car, got ambulance, paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Creality CR Scan 01, which is like their first generation scanner. I was given this probably like a year and a half ago on promo, and I still use it to this day. They have a newer one called the Lizard, which is apparently controversial. I don't know anything about it, but so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scan this area right here to get the data for the lens, and then we're gonna put it in the computer and uh, do a bunch of magic with it. Let's just see what happens. I haven't done this laptop yet. Oh yeah. These new lights are helping a lot too. The trick with scanning is just to try to be smooth and not move too quickly so it loses itself. I'm gonna grab the bottom of the bumper while I'm at it too. I don't want to confuse it by going too large because the scanner's not meant to go for a large scanning area. So I'm gonna keep it smaller. Hit the same thing multiple times. Do it. Look at that. 
So the way this works is when it scans, it takes a bunch of pictures, essentially. Let me try to get zoom in here. And if I zoom in really close, you can see all it is is a, like a matrix of dots. And now what's going to happen is it's going to take these dots and then convert them into vertices for the uh, 3D model. Yeah, the future is now and also many years ago, but that's okay. Check it out, we got our scan data. You can see some ripples where they're like, it was shiny on the bumper. You can see it's like weird and shiny and stuff mm -hmm. in the bumper, so it kind of threw it off a bit. But that doesn't matter. This is all that matters right here. See, it's important to have a nice non-glossy finish when you scan, because that's all perfect and this is all like pitted. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed, honestly. All right, so there's the scan that I cropped out whatever I didn't need inside of Fusion 360. And then what I did was I modeled over it with the lens that we need. I'm gonna scan out of the way here. So here's our lens. So it, it's a curved piece that has a, a curve on the face. The curve on the face, the model was pretty tough for me as a amateur uh, CAD person, <laughs> whatever, whatever you call that. So this is our test lens. I don't have any backing to it. I mean, I have a little bit of rib at the top, but there's no mounting hardware or anything. I'm just going to print this lens to make sure that it actually fits the car. And then we'll print a higher resolution version of that. So I took the scan and I threw it into here a slicer here to slice up the print. I ended up having to cut it in half because I just couldn't fit it all on the bed. And I'm printing with a 0.8 nozzle so it prints really fast. It's only gonna take two hours so we can test it because it doesn't need to be that fine resolution. And I'm also printing no support, so it might get a little wonky at the very top right here where uh, there's no supports underneath of it, but I'm feeling kind of wild today, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, if you're not familiar with 3D printing, um, what it works is it like it literally melts plastic and it puts it in layers and cools it as it goes. So um, you can see the layers here as it goes up through to print them. So I have it printing right now over yonder with our fancy purple light going. I just used the only filament I have right now, which is this bright blue PLA, but that's okay. It took a while to model that, but I got it. I am excited. Are you excited, Logan? I'm teeming with excitement. He's titillated. <laughs> that's what I yeah, that. While we wait for the print, might as well get some work done on the car. So I'm gonna work on the rear spoil a little bit more. So in the last video, I made them symmetrical. I made this entire half and the underside. So now I'm going to finish this weld here and actually weld the upper and lower piece for the center together and get that cleaned up. Done. Now, the overhangs that I said would be a problem were a problem. Look, what overhang problem? I don't know what you're talking about, see? Look at that though. There's something exciting about like designing your own piece and printing it the same day. Look at that! I mean, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> almost. <laughs> I don't entirely. Yep, see? I don't entirely know what I'm doing. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know what happened here. I know why it doesn't reach. I'm stupid. Because it's on the outside of the clay. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a moment there. I was just like, oh, okay, I made a mistake. All right, so I carved it back and I made little channels top and bottom to make space for this. So it should fit now, maybe? I don't know. Not qualified to answer that question, <laughs> apparently. I think I done it. Let's ignore right here where it lifted yeah. from the build plate, but. We got a lens. I really like this right here. All right, so now that the fast one's done, we're gonna do a second test with lots of support and print it in a different orientation. And we have to let that run overnight because it can take a lot longer. Ooh, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. There we go, we got it. 
I'm not sure if a uh, blue lens matches the uh, color chart for front turn signal. Hey, there's spray paint, there's a way. <laughs> now we have this figured out. Yeah. So we can go off that to adjust anything below. And then hopefully we can get this valence part figured out so then we can get that off and then I can actually make the fender out of aluminum. You're just really itching to make that last fender. Yeah, because it's like this is like the like three-legged dog right now. It's missing a leg. <laughs> hey, three-legged dogs are good dogs. So now that we have the lens figured out, that means we have our footprint for the light. We did all of this because we need to figure out the rest of the bumper and then base it off where the light's going to be. Now we have it very, very close, but I want to refine some stuff, add a little bit more shape down here. We got to figure out this valence that runs across here, how, how it ties in, because it's going to be a separate piece. And we have this hump here in the bumper, in the center of that, from the bumper and warping. I got to get rid of that. So we're going to do that now. I feel like an old timey like war doctor. <laughs> like, yep, here's a here's a suture right here. This will this will patch you up. Look at that. Now we actually have a color representation as well for the lens. Be gone, blue Smurf light. <laughs> it's Charmander's turn. I'd like that, that light. I feel like I'm, I'm being basked in the rays of the sun right now. <laughs> one of our red lights showed up and I just have it up on a mic stand up there to uh, mock up where we're gonna be putting lights in the shop. So I'm gonna keep moving them around and you know, keep bringing higher quality to our videos. Plastic melting wizard, this is my wand. Now we gotta give them a friend. Like I always say, everyone needs a friend. So once we have a mirror image of this lens, then we can move forward, model our housing, add the lights, and a functional lens that you can see through, and we'll have the front end of a car. 